Armando Baycott is a phenomenal recruiter for North Carolina, and his tweets have a history of preceding great news. Did it just happen again? You are Locked on Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, it's Monday, April 10th, 2023. Boy, we're getting close to tax day. Get your taxes in if you haven't. i got to finish mine off. Welcome into the Locked on Tar Heels podcast, the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you so much for joining us on today's episode, which is brought to you, by the way, by HelloFresh. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. So go to HelloFresh.com slash college6060 and use code college60 for 60% off plus free shipping. Coming up on today's show, we got all sorts of Carolina transfer portal news, at least with guys going out. We got two of them over the weekend. We now know their landing spots. None of them are ACC schools. That's great news. And Theo Pinson had himself a day on Sunday. We will talk about that as well. But first, we got to talk about tweets. Armando Baycott is tweeting, and uh, it's got the Carolina fan base. It's got the Carolina Tar Heel faithful up in arms trying to figure out what on earth is going on. So let me show it to you for those who are watching on YouTube. On April 8th, so that's Saturday evening, Armando Baycott tweeted this, stay tuned, dot, 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 dot. So it's like ellipsis plus one, right? Ellipsis is the name you call the little dots after that when it's three of them. Yeah, there you go. Da, 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 da. If you didn't know, now you know. So Armando Baycott tweets that out, 7.15 p.m., I'm in central time. I don't know if that's 7.15 my time or Eastern, whatever. There it is. And this thing has so many views, so many retweets and quotes and all that. Because the question becomes, what is this insanely cryptic tweet from Armando Baycott? Well, friends, I've done some digging. I've done some looking back. I've got some ideas and I want to share those with you. But I think that it portends great news for the North Carolina Tar Heels basketball team. We all know that from the second he committed to North Carolina many, many years ago now at this point, Armando Baycott has been one of the greatest advocates and recruiters for the University of North Carolina, not just the basketball team, but beyond for football. Um, the, the dude's already said his little brother is going to be a Tar Heel, who's a great basketball player himself. I mean, he's just been so upfront in this process about like, hey, I'm coming back to school. And that very day was like, who who wants to come play with me? DM me, let's get this going, right? So it's not like Armando's just tweeting about something random that's out there that he doesn't know what he's talking about. Like the dude is dialed in. He's trying to, he's like, I've got one more year. I want people to come play with me. So for me, as you look at this, uh, the, the tweet we were just looking at, stay tuned. What does it mean? Well, for me, I have to imagine that it's great transfer portal news. There could be other things that it can mean. That's where I land on it. Part of it is that there is historical precedent for this very thing from Armando. Specifically, a cryptic tweet leading to great transfer portal news. Let me take you back to last summer and June 16th. On June 16th, for those of you watching, I've put the the tweet up so that you can see it. He tweets out like the the yellow emoji twice, the face yellow emoji, both of them with sunglasses on. Even more cryptic than this one, honestly. And it's like, uh, cool, Armando, I guess maybe you're at the beach or what's going on, right? Like, who knows? Well, that was June 16th. Two days later, on June 18th, the news came out that Pete Nance was committing to North Carolina. Now, I know with hindsight, Pete Nance just didn't have the year, right? That that he and everyone else hoped, right? It just it just is what it is. Things just don't always fit or work or play out. Pete Nance had his back trouble, whatever. At that moment, that was massive news that we thought was going to set Carolina on the trajectory to be right back to where they wanted to go this season. So, June sixteenth, 
Armando tweets the sunglasses thing. June 18th, two days later, Pete Nance commits to North Carolina publicly, at least. He might have already done so behind closed doors at that point. So keep in mind, Armando tweeted out the stay tuned. I'll go back to that for those of you watching on April 8th. That was Saturday. So if if the trend holds, it's the same timeline. That means at some point on Monday, we would be getting good transfer portal news. Is there anything to tell us that it's going to be Monday? No, because that's just a very small sample size. But I, I mean, there is reason, obviously, to trust Mondo. There's reason to believe that if he's going to tweet, stay tuned, it's going to come, whatever the news is, in pretty short time period. So I'm looking for something on whatever this is early this week, Monday, Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, just depending on how things go. So the first question, as I said, what's it mean? Well, to me, it means somebody is coming to North Carolina and it's like a done deal. The next question then becomes, who on earth is he talking about? Well, the the obvious speculation would be Harrison Ingram. There's been so much noise with him to North Carolina lately. Um, all, all the phone calls that we've heard have been going on between Ingram and the coaching staff. It just makes sense. He's got, while he's not shot as well as he wanted to in his first two years there at Stanford, he's got everything else that Carolina would want in a three. And let's keep in mind, even though just because he hasn't shot well those first couple years doesn't mean he couldn't make a big jump. Let's, let's look back to 2017 Justin Jackson. Massive massive three-point shooting jump. And I'm not saying Harrison Ingram can do that. I'm just saying just because he's not shot as well from three his first two years doesn't mean he couldn't this year, right? He could come to North Carolina and do that. So that is my hypothesis is that it is Harrison Ingram is going to commit to North Carolina. However, let me go beyond that. Remember, North Carolina has five scholarships available right now. And while there hasn't been a ton of news, there is other potential out there. A lot of people have been asking me about Nick Timberlake. Why haven't we been hearing more from him? What's going on? Are there any other updates? Well, the most recent update is that he was at Kansas this past weekend. And so one of the potentials, remember Armando tweeted this Saturday night, is that Timberlake is either on the back end of his visit or in his visit. And it could be, again, this is just hypothetical, that he finishes his visit and decides, all right, Lawrence was fine. Lawrence, Kansas was great. Bill Self's a great coach, great program, doing great stuff. I've realized after my visit here, I want to be at North Carolina. That's another possibility. It could be one or both of those guys, Harrison Ingram or Nick Timberlake. It could also obviously be somebody. Remember, I've talked a lot about why aren't we hearing so much? Just be patient. They're keeping it close to the vest. They don't want to publicize it for everyone in the world to hear. Uh, here's who it's going to be. So it it could come out of left field and be somebody that you've never, um, m- maybe you've thought of them, but maybe it's not been wildly publicized. So that could be. Now, there's also the possibility that we're way overthinking this thing and Armando means nothing about the transfer portal. I don't think that's likely, but it could just be like, remember the tweet as, as you're seeing it right now is stay tuned. And maybe it's stay tuned. I've got a big NIL announcement coming in the next couple of days. That's a very real possibility in this time period that we're in of college basketball. So it's just hard to know. But my best guess would be that this means Carolina is getting transfer portal news and that that news is that Harrison Ingram is coming to Chapel Hill next year. Keep in mind, he's got two years of eligibility left. That would be really good stuff for Carolina. Well, some definitive transfer portal news that we already do know, Caleb Love announced on Friday that he is heading to Michigan next season. And while I didn't necessarily think that might be the landing point, uh, landing spot, I believe it's actually a good fit for him. And that makes me happy for Caleb Love. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But first, this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, and double plays are back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now new customers can step up to the plate with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up, place your first bet, and get up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if you don't win. So, 
why don't you go check out the lines for right now? Maybe you want to go ahead and put down a future on something with MVPs or Cy Youngs, or maybe you want to see all the action coming up in the next couple of days. Don't miss your chance to get that no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Folks, the news broke on Friday. Caleb Love is officially going to Ann Arbor. He's going to be a Michigan Wolverine where they hopefully have lots of timeouts available for him. That's probably not a funny joke. No, that's a funny joke. Come on, Chris Weber, where are you at, bro? I mean, honestly, thank goodness it's not an ACC school. I know there was really no speculation of it being an ACC school, but I'm just very glad that it's not. The first thing that jumps off the page to me about this is... There might be a matchup between North Carolina and Michigan coming up this season. They're not directly on each other's schedules, but both teams are in the battle for Atlantis during Thanksgiving week. We don't have the bracket out for that yet, although hmm, I can imagine what the tournament organizers are going to be looking at. So uh, we'll, we'll certainly keep our eyes on that. That would be a very intriguing matchup, of course. Keep in mind, if Harrison Ingram comes to North Carolina, you know who else is in that field? Stanford. So there could be a potential of Caleb Love coming back to play the Tar Heels. There could be a potential of Harrison Ingram going back to play Stanford. Also, there, there's been conflicting reports about whether Kerwin Walton is in the transfer portal or not from Texas Tech. But Texas Tech is also in this field. So Carolina could play them. And if Kerwin Walton is still there, would play their former player. So lots of interesting matchups. Honestly, this is happening all over college basketball now because... There are so many transfers that it's just inevitable. You're going to have more and more and more players playing their former teams. Honestly, I'm here for it. I love this kind of action where you get like this intrigue of like, is it going to be awkward? Is it going to be fun? Are we going to beat the crap out of our former player? Not like physically, but like just like beat their team badly. Interesting to watch. Well, as for Caleb Love going to Michigan, let's let's just get into that side of it. I think this is a good decision for him. I think it's mutually beneficial. Like it just, there was just so much vitriol from the Carolina fan base towards Caleb Love and not everybody, right? Like don't, don't hear me say that, but he just had to put up with so much. And frankly, at, at times I, I don't understand vitriol, but I understand the critique of like Caleb Love could at times shoot you into or out of a game. It's just, the, the volume shooter he was or is with the inefficiency he had the majority, a lot of the time at Carolina, it, it just is what it is. And so I think the opportunity for him to get out to just a new place, a new start, I think is going to be good for him. And I think for Carolina to just kind of reset and say, okay, our foundation is RJ and, and Mondo, I, I think is a good thing for Carolina too, to just be able to Say, I, I, I don't know why. Here's where it is. Let's just move on and do that. And, and to that point, hear me say this, and I'll, I'll say it about every Carolina that player goes on. Cheer for these dudes, man. Like, these are guys that you have known and loved and cheered for for the past, you know, for Caleb, three years. Like, you, you want to see him do well. Cheer. Don't, don't cheer for Michigan, <laughs> but cheer for Caleb Love, right? Like, you, you want to see him do his best. Uh, maybe don't cheer for him if they end up playing in Atlantis because you want to beat him, obviously. But I, I just want to see the best for Caleb. Now, interestingly, with Michigan themselves, there should be lots of shots available for Caleb. We know that Hunter Dickinson is in the transfer portal right now. We know that Jet Howard, Jawan's son, is um, entered in the NBA draft, as is Kobe Bufkin. We expect both of those guys to stay in the draft. And so we will keep our eyes on that. But but for Caleb, he's joining a roster that's lost a lot of, of the guys that took a lot of their shots last year. And so they will be there for him to take if Juwan Howard wants him to take that many, because that's the next thing I'm going to be watching for. How does Juwan Howard go about coaching Caleb Love? Does he reach out? to coach Williams? Does he reach out to coach Davis to say, Hey, just, just give me some insight into uh, how you guys coached Caleb, how you critiqued him, how you praised him, how you helped 
mold and shape him. He might not, but but keep in mind the, the coaching fraternity, they talk and, and have these conversations. I'm curious to see, like, does he give Caleb the same type of leash that Coach Davis did? Does he rein him in a little more? Is he a little more um, hard-edged with him? Uh, we, we've seen it from some of how Coach Howard has um, been in, in some of his press conference moments, post-game moments where um, he, he's not afraid to get a little bit fiery um, and get out there. So I, I just that's going to be a, a dynamic I'm really curious to watch next year for Michigan and, and the rest of their personnel. Now, here's another question that we have to ask for Michigan specifically is, with Caleb Love in the fold, does Hunter Dickinson – reconsider going in the transfer portal now that he has Caleb Love back or is it no that dude takes a lot of shots I'd still rather go somewhere else and keep in mind when Carolina and Michigan played at the Jumpman Invitational last year there's a little bit of an incident between these two guys and so I personally don't expect Dickinson to reconsider I'm curious if you do though do you, do you like this move for Caleb do you think Dickinson would come back and I forgot to say I'd love to know your thoughts on uh, Armando's tweet what do you think it means let me know about that um, so ultimately for Caleb I think this is a good move getting somewhere new getting out pretty far away going to the Big Ten Big Ten has great basketball they haven't won a national championship since Michigan State in 2000 but it is what it is there. So Caleb Love heading to new pastures. Again, we wish him the best. We don't wish Michigan the best. We always want to beat them, but we did in the 93 national championship game. And we did just this past year. And so uh, you got to imagine Caleb is, is wanting to go up there and help uh, keep, keep things going for coach Howard and the Wolverines. And so we'll keep our eyes on that. Now, Caleb Love was not the only outgoing Carolina transfer to announce his intentions over the weekend. There was another. We're going to talk about that. Plus, as I said, Theo Pinson did something historical I thought he was primed to do in college over the weekend. He never did it in college, but he just knocked it out in the NBA. We'll talk about all that in just a second. All right, it was not just Caleb Love announcing his transfer destination over the weekend. On Sunday evening, Dontre Styles also announced where he was headed. And one, one of the things that kills me is Dontrez, a, a kid from North Carolina, from Kinston, from, you know, Reggie Bullock and all, all these other great Tar Heels who have been from that same place. And Dontrez wanting to come, wanting to be a Tar Heel. And it just, just didn't get the time that he wanted or needed to feel solidified. And so I, I, hate that he's like man i'd love to be here but i gotta go um i think it's a great statement on where we are at as college basketball he doesn't want to leave carolina but he wants to play and he's just not neither his freshman or sophomore year getting that much time to be able to play so he's got to go do that he's got to go blaze a trail and be at a place where he can get minutes Maybe it's in a different system. Maybe it's just a, fr a fresh start with a new coach that believes in him differently or more than, than Coach Davis has. And that's not to say that Coach Davis and Dontrez got it wrong. It's just, it is what it is. I, I wish Dontrez had had more time. I th thought he just brought some great athleticism to the team and loved so many of those. Similar to Caleb, he's got one of the shots that will go down forever is really, really helping Carolina get as far as they did last year, that three pointer to start overtime against Baylor in the round of 32. That's going to go down as one of the more memorable shots in Carolina history. I, I don't know where it would rank, but I'm going to remember that shot forever. I thought Carolina was toast entering that overtime period, but they weren't. And a lot of that was because Don Trez hit that three pointer. So I don't blame him in any way for leaving the competitor in me would want to do the same despite being at my dream school. I want to play basketball. I'm a basketball player and that's where I'd want to be. I'm not saying me. I'm a, I'm a decent at best basketball player. I can distribute and that's about it. I am a baseball player and that's what I do. <laughs> um, so where does Don Tres styles wind up? We all know now it's not NC state. <laughs> I think that's the biggest thing, right? Yeah, it's Georgetown. Georgetown's the answer. 
But for forever, the 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 hubbub, the conversation was that Dontrez would be headed to Raleigh, would stay in the ACC and be at NC State. He's not. He's going to Georgetown. And that really just kind of flipped on Saturday night. I started to see some of that buzz into Sunday morning and then throughout the day Sunday until uh, it was officially announced on Sunday evening that he would indeed go to Georgetown. I think this is cool. Like, again, same with Caleb. Just thankfully, he's not in the ACC. Thankfully for Dontrez, he's not a wolf pack. He's not a wolf puppy. Not going to NC State. This is great news. I mean, it's not the best news. The best news would be that he was able to stay and be a Tar Heel and get lots of playing time, right? That's the ideal. Because just like I said about Caleb, I want to cheer for Dontrez. I, I want the best for him. I want him to just go and ball out in the nation's capital, right, for Ed Cooley. Like, Ed Cooley is a phenomenal coach, just left Providence to go to Georgetown this offseason after things things just never worked out for Patrick Ewing. This is funny. Uh, I just realized both of these guys are transferring to schools and players. I know it's not Patrick Ewing anymore, who Carolina has beaten in national championship games. That's fun. (laughs) I love it. Way to go. That's kind of like, it's just twisting the knife once it's in. Uh, but we are losing these two guys, and that that's really sad. But Georgetown, a, a place with a bunch of history, a rich basketball tradition that's not been – I mean, they've just flat out been not good, unfortunately, under Patrick Ewing. It's just been true. They had that one miracle run to the Big East Championship. Outside of that, it's been, it's been bad. So they're trying to rebuild – They got uh, a couple guys that got an Illinois transfer as well on Sunday, bringing in some others. And Dontrez is part of that. And so I I really think that with this rebuild going on for Georgetown, it's it's an opportunity for Dontrez to step in and hopefully get some good playing time, right? Like you want to see basketball players be able to play. And and you would love that to be for North Carolina. But for Dontrez, I I just want to see it somewhere. And again, this is the state of college basketball. High major programs are going to bring in high level recruits and those that don't get the playing time they thought they would get are going to move on. That That's the thing for high major programs. And it doesn't necessarily speak anything bad or ill about your program. It's just somebody's some scholarship guys aren't going to get the time. So they're going to move on. We just got to accept that reality. It's the same kind of thing that mid majors have. It's like, at the high major level, you're worried if a guy doesn't play enough or doesn't play well enough that he's going to leave. At the mid-major and low-major level, you're worried about guys when they play too well because then they're going to transfer up, right? And so um, with Dontrez, it's just him going out. And again, I'm just glad it's not uh, NC State. Now, we're to the point. Remember, there are six guys transferring out of North Carolina. We now know the destination of four of them. Dontrez to Georgetown, Caleb Love to Michigan. Then we previously knew Tyler Nickel to Virginia Tech. And we learned last week, Justin McCoy to Hawaii. And so we're just waiting now to hear where Puff Johnson will go and where Will Shaver would go. For Puff, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go somewhere back closer to home, you know, uh, back towards Pennsylvania. uh, He is Puff. Cam is now playing up that way. And so uh, it, it wouldn't be shocking at all for me if he headed back towards um, the Pittsburgh, New York area, right? Um, I don't I don't think he'll go back to Pittsburgh. I don't know. Maybe uh, he never went there, but Cam did. It's a possibility. We keep it open. Now, Theo Stinking Pinson. He gets a start in the Nets' regular season finale. They're playing the 76ers. Frankly, it was a blowout. Uh, 76ers win 134-105. to 105. But... Our man, Theo Pinson, 23 points, 13 rebounds, 12 assists. That's right. Theo Pinson just notched a triple-double in the NBA. Theo Pinson. I love this so hard. It's And it's hilarious to me because I used to always say, like in my – Articles when when I was writing a lot, I'm not I'm not writing at all right now, but I would always write. I think like just Theo Pinson has has the build, the skill set, the distribution, the rebounding, the scoring to get a triple double. I, I I thought he would be that would be something he would do in his time in Chapel Hill. And it just never happened. I always said, I think Theo Pinson will be the next Tar Heel 
to record a triple double. He did. I just thought it was going to be in a Tar Heels uniform. Ended up in a Nets uniform to do it. Theo, this is awesome. I know you're probably not watching this. Who knows? Maybe you are. But way to go. We're so proud of you, the Carolina family. This is awesome. This is great. But seriously, you know, there, there's so few uh, triple or triple doubles in the history of North Carolina and happened within such a close time span there. I, I just always thought Theo would do it. Never did. But now he has. Theo Pinson, congratulations. What a way to wrap up the regular season. I just hope some NBA franchise out there will recognize Theo Pinson for how great he is and will bring him in. Uh, to where he can be a regular rotation piece, getting a good level of playing time. And he's not just the the bench guy that we all love for, for how encouraging he is on the bench. So Theo, way to go. We're proud of you. Uh, best of luck moving forward. Dontrez, Caleb, we hate to see these guys go, uh, but, but we hope things go well for them. And we hope Carolina is able to backfill. We hope we get great news from whatever it is. Armando Baycott was cryptically tweeting about over the weekend. Hopefully we will find out very, very soon on that. Friends, that's it for today's episode of Locked on Tar Heels. Hope you had a great weekend. Thanks so much for tuning in on Monday. Great stuff ahead this week. As always, hopefully we'll have some transfer portal news incoming for once to talk about. Not just Paxson, Wojcik, but more. Oh, you can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Heels. You can follow me at Isaac Shade. Email the show, LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Would love to hear more from you and have more in-depth conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the show if you haven't done so already. Boink! Smash it. Smash the like button and leave comments. I want to know again your thoughts on what Armando, what the heck Armando Baycott's talking about. Caleb Love to Michigan, Dontre Styles to Georgetown. Would love to know where you think Puff Johnson's going. Or, uh, man, maybe you just got some kudos you want to give to Theo for his great performance. Once again, really appreciate you hanging out with me on a Monday, talking Carolina sports. It's always a great opportunity to do that. And it's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. Yes, indeed. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. But until then, peace. Peace.